feature. Um, and there might be bug fixes, uh, so we want to make sure our code is, is as clean as possible so that whoever has to go back and look at this or build or extend it in the future doesn't have to wonder, what the heck was this person thinking when they built this? I can't make it a it. So, um, how did I get to the point where I started making really complicated <coughs> websites? Um, I, after I moved back to, I worked for a big bank in Seattle that doesn't exist anymore. Um, and I moved back to New Hampshire. Um, I just decided to go freelance and people started asking me to build, not blog sites, but content-driven sites <laughs> for companies. So, uh, WordPress was uh, just about turning the corner between that's a really great blogging thing to, um, okay, to like, wouldn't it be cool to give authors these really cool user interfaces to make, oh, you know, is that better? Cool. Um, to make like a, a company website or a, or a content driven website with, you know, with the same robust back end with all the theme support and stuff. So, I started to make WordPress websites, and I noticed as I made them, people kept asking me to do more and more complex things. Bigger sites, deeper levels, they wanted to have multiple blogs on each site, and um, and it and I started to do bigger uh, bigger audience sites, more customers, more traffic, more bandwidth. So um, this all kind of led to more more problems. Um, I, like, I like solving problems, I think problems are fun. I like billing hours, um, so <laughs> problems are good. Um, but some of the things that people ask me to do were really kind of terrible. Um, and uh, I started, I not until I said in retrospect, did I, they weren't really terrible. Um, okay, they were terrible. Um, but the, the way to avoid terrible problems um, is to do things right and be sensible from the beginning. So um, no matter what anybody asked me to do, I found, though, that WordPress can do it. That's the good news, right? Um, but I also found that no matter what anybody asks me to do, WordPress can do it. Um, so uh, I started to to kind of put together like a like not a list of commandments. That's that's really too too strict. But just kind of a set of rules for myself. Um, and as we get down in the stack, that you know the stuff on the top is what you should do, and the stuff on the bottom is what you shouldn't do. So um, the very first thing is. Do I, I, I really should try to solve problems using the tools that WordPress makes available in the, in the UI. Um, if, if an author can check a box or choose a different select list to, to solve a problem, instead of me writing custom code for it, that is actually the best, most extendable, most maintainable uh, going forward. Um, there's, it's also really clever how WordPress structures uh, theme files. Um, if you attended my talk a couple years ago, I talked about theme construction, but uh, you can always look at the 2013 theme uh, and see how you can do clever things just by naming files in a certain way. Uh, if I had a, a page on my website for directions, I call the, I call the PHP file page-directions.php, WordPress would know to load that template instead of my default template for my directions page. So you don't have to, to get tricky um, with coding and stuff if you can do it with the, the tools that WordPress provides you. Um, if you do have to dip in and write a lot of PHP code or start writing PHP code, you should try to stick mostly to the stuff that's documented in the codex. Um, that's the stuff that's going to be maintained going forward. Um, if you find yourself having to do a lot of clever custom PHP coding, um, you might want to take a step back and, and dig a little bit deeper. Um, and don't don't write SQL yourself. Don't actually hit the database tables directly. Um, I know. I know a lot of very, very smart people who write PHP who just see the front end and they, they know SQL, so they just say, oh, that's in that table, I'll go get that stuff. Um, so this is kind of a, when you start to Google for your problems, um, one of the things to be wary of is I see a lot of these answers on Stack Overflow. A lot of really smart people who say like, oh, that's in the WP uh, metadata table. You can just get it from there. Really, we want to stay up in those upper layers so that the WordPress team is free to change things behind the scenes if they have to and our code will always work in the future um, in case the you know, database scheme changes or something, it doesn't break everything we do. So, um, <clears throat> so yeah, and the final bit of advice on that is don't be a hero. Every time I write a piece of code, I sit back and I go, gosh, that was, that was pretty clever, that's pretty cool. I wish I had like a muscular reflex that would turn around and kick me in the butt as hard as it can. <laughs> because somewhere, somewhere down the line, either me or somebody else is gonna have to look at that and figure out what I did. Um, and if it's too clever, um, they're not going to be able to understand it, and they're just going to throw it all out and have to rebuild it again. 
or worse yet, the bug never gets fixed, the site never gets updated. Um, and I don't want that kind of job security. I don't want to write obscure code so that you know they have to hire me to uh, solve new problems all the time. So, um, so the first thing, the first question that I always get is when I'm given a, a site map and given a bunch of data and comps, those usually come well before the content, unfortunately. Um, am I going to use am I going to use pages or am I going to use posts? And you, you really have to step back and I, I like to do a test where I step back and I just take two of these things at random and I put them next to each other. Um, and I ask, is there some sort of context between these two completely random things? Um, if there is, it will be obvious and apparent and I'll say, oh, these things do relate to each other. Or I could put them next to each other and say, oh my gosh, those have nothing to do with each other. That means there is a context for that thing, though, right? Um, so they, sh they do fit somewhere in a specific place, just not together. I'll, I'll, I'll wrap that up in a second. Um, the next question I ask is, there's, is there some sort of workflow uh, that the, the end user is going to do to get to this page? Um, if they want to see the CEO's uh, collection of turtles, are they going to go to the About page, to the Management Team page, to the CEO page? So think, think about whether there's a workflow that might have to fit into some sort of a relation, relational uh, structure. And then I try to think of, is, is any individual page or piece of content, yeah, I, I got two boys, she stopped asking. Um, is, any piece of, is any particular page going to grow to the point in the future where it's got to be broken out into multiple pages so that it's not just this giant unwieldy block of mess that ends up in a So, um, and the last test uh, for this is, do I want, it to be visually distinct from all the other pages, so I want to give the author the ability to change that. Um, in WordPress, the pages, you can select your page templates this way. So if you need to make a one-off page, like your directions page, um, you, you, know, you can give that control to the author. So if it passed all of these tests, if it has some sort of context, if it relates to other things, um, if, if we want it to be a one-off, visually distinct thing, it should probably be a page. So uh, that's kind of my, my test on another thing should be pages. Um, and then the other, the other test, if we put the things next to each other and, and it's just meh, you know, they don't, they don't repel or, or attract, um, can they go in the bucket? Can, can a bunch of these things live together simultaneously and live independently? Um, we just gather them up in a bucket. And, um, and then I think about, uh, too many words, but, but like, are we going to be retrieving this by some sort of metadata that we've applied to it? Um, by, alphabetically, numerically, by its date, by uh, some sort of wording or metadata that we apply to it, but not necessarily, um, you know, have a menu item that goes directly to it that's visible on every page. So, um, and is it something that we want to make available in an RSS feed uh, or publish in, in a standard format? So, these are my tests that, that means something should probably be a post. Um, and if I go through this process every time, uh, I, look at a new page or a new project, um, it really kind of makes it clear whether I should organize things like posts or organize things like pages. So just wrapping up the page as, you know, structure and workflow and hierarchy and, and it might expand, like, you know, the leaf on the tree might become a branch of its own with more leaves, uh, or um, do you want it to be like a, you know, a one-off template of design for a particular page? Um, and posts. Can we load them into a bucket? Do we retrieve them as a bunch together based on some sort of metadata that we've applied to them? Um, and do, is it something that we want to publish? Um, now there's, there's always, since WordPress is a mature and flexible and extensible platform, um, there's always ways that, that we, there are corner cases that we can, you know, that throw curveballs at you. Um, if you. If you do have a post that you want to display with a different template, there's a plugin for that. Um, if you, if you want a whole group of, if you want to gather up all of the, the children of a page to display them all on that page, that's fairly simple too. Where in Codex, there's a function called get children that just grabs all of the, all of the pages that are hierarchically below this one and shows it. Um, or the most exciting one is um, if you want to take a group of posts uh, and give them a distinct visual format or layout. Um, they introduced in the WordPress 3.1 something called post formats, which uh, I'm just starting to, to get projects into using now. Um, post formats are really cool. 
Because previously, we, we, would, we would kind of go down the road of making more complex websites because people wanted to publish different types of data, like, uh, kind of like I just want to publish a link and a comment about it, or I found this cool video and I want to publish that, or um, I want to publish a chat transcript, you know, just some little quotes back and forth. Um, and to do that and to give posts subtly different layout in the content area uh, required <coughs> dirty things like, you know, you pick a particular category and then when you display them, you have to search and see as that category and change them. Um, look at uh, the 2013 theme. Uh, there's there's a, an ability called post formats that lets you pick these types of formats. So they, they can all be posts. They can all live in the stream of posts, but they can have different uh, visual displays for stuff. So that's really cool. Um, now, if, if we still feel that that doesn't give us the flexibility that we really need, uh, then we hit a jumping off point where we start to think about custom post types. Um, and I usually, I, the test that I use for this is, is really kind of, <laughs> do, you, do you need more than one market? What, would it look weird for these two groups of things to be mixed? Um, or would it look, you know, do we, do we just want to retrieve a lot of these things and display them a certain way, and a lot of people want these things and display them in a completely different way? Um, most formats gives us a little flexibility like that, but if we want them to be absolutely distinct, um, we should probably jump forward to something like custom post types. So, custom post types gives us as many buckets as you want um, and that can be different and that can be displayed differently. And the, the biggest the biggest thing I like now that um, when they first introduced custom post types, it was somewhat of a trick to get them all to be in like their own posts archive page. Mm -hmm. um, but they've since updated it so there's there's a, there's an actual flag when you create custom post types that says has archive. And yes, so you can have a nice permalink at the bottom of your you know website slash things is is an archive page for all of your custom post types, which is really cool. So. Um, and when you combine, think about combining custom post types then with post formats, and you can do interesting things like uh, there's a micro blog type of post format. So you can essentially have one page that looks kind of like your Twitter feed, because you have you have a post type bucket that's just full of your post formats of, uh, of a micro blog update. So um, this this has helped out a lot for me when you know. When a company comes to me and they have they have lots of buckets of things, they have products, they have people, they have all this other stuff, um, and they want to give people flexibility to do cool stuff like that. So, <sighs> okay. So I, I covered kind of how I approach the things themselves, whether they're poster pages and whether they give you their own buckets or not. And um, and now when we talk about how to how we're retrieving them. Um, tags and categories can work together pretty well. Um, tags, obviously, are more free-form. Categories can relate to each other. Um, so again, we're back to that to relate, relation versus cohabitation. Is this a family or is this a bunch of roommates living in a house? Kind of thing? Um, can they can tags stand on their own, or do they only exist in the context of other things or their parent? Which is when I would. I would use a category instead of a tag. So, um, and and when we create custom taxonomies, yeah, it's more. It's 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 we have more and more collections of things that we can apply. Um, and it might seem superfluous, like why don't we just all lump, you know, things into categories? Um, but it gets it gets really cool when we start retrieving them based on this metadata. Um, if I wanted to uh, make a website about cars, I could have just categories for all the manufacturers and categories for colors and categories for models. Um, but when I want to pull those back, if I just want blue Ford pickup trucks, if I had each of those in separate taxonomies, the query for that um, is, is a lot easier to write than to, than to include a bunch of, it has to be in this category and this category and this category. So I can, and, it, and it's a lot more readable and maintainable for somebody in the future who looks at my code and says, oh, they, they want Manufacturer equals Ford. Color equals blue. Um, but the jumping off point is if I wanted to find all Ford pickup trucks that were red or blue, if I were try to if I had all of that lumped into just categories without the custom taxonomies for color and manufacturing and stuff, 
that would get it a lot trickier to, to write using the APIs, doing it the right way, not writing our own SQL. Um, so, and I, I like to think that I like to think that it's just more intuitive for the person who's offering this to be writing writing a title and writing content and then seeing how you know categories, tags, colors, manufacturers, you know, type of vehicle. As opposed to scrolling through a laundry list of categories to find the one that might be relevant to them. I kinda like to put that intermediary step in their thinking process so that uh, it makes a lot more sense to them. Because remember, we want these to be up, you know, updatable websites. We don't, you know, obviously, I know how it works, but somebody who just follows up to it, you know, weeks and years from now might not. So, um, the other really, really huge thing that um, that people have been asking me for is, you know, to extend the complexity of the page beyond just a title and a content area. Um, obviously, the entire web, the entire web is not just the blog. So we need to have a lot more complex websites, the layouts, yeah, with distinct content areas. And um, thankfully, we, we have custom fields in WordPress. So I, I try to resist custom fields up until the point in which I can't resist them anymore. <laughs> and, uh, and I'll define that a little bit more. Any, anytime I would have to ask the author to put something special in the content area, I really should be using custom fields and not, not relying on them to do anything. I don't want, like, the same reason why we, we don't want them to have to know HTML tags. I mean, we don't want them to have to remember that they have to put a block and then put in a shortcut and put in another block or something. Um, thankfully, WordPress has given us uh, uh, easy access to custom fields. And um, so I, I like to use them any time that there's, there's a visually distinct content area on, the, on a website uh, that aren't connected. Um, if we want to display something, if we want to pull in posts and display different things about them beyond just the normal, this is, you know, on an archive page we'll see the excerpt, on the, on the page of the load we'll see the content area, but if we, if we aggregate them somewhere else, do we want it to show something different? Um, and that's what custom, custom fields gives you uh, the ability to extend it to. And um, if we want to give if we, well, we don't want to limit the author, but we want to empower them to only put in stuff that we know is going to work. Uh, so when we create a custom field for an author to create, to put an image in there, or to put in a snippet of text, or to put in like a big WYSIWYG block, um, we can we can code specifically so that you know this field will only accept an image. Or um, th does anybody write their own custom fields code by hand? Up until about six months ago, I. I wrote all of my own custom field code by hand. And um, now I, I, I started using advanced custom fields instead, and uh, I, I have them back. Uh, when, we, when, they first, when they first introduced custom fields, it was, there weren't any third-party tools that were really mature enough to support it. But I, I, I license add-ons to advanced custom fields that I don't even use yet. I just want to keep them off because I, I, the tool is so fantastic. So um, I highly recommend not writing your own custom field code. Um, Right foot to the butt to get that a lot earlier. But, um, so, but I have found when I deployed this, when I've given it over to authors, sometimes it's not super intuitive. And I think a lot of that is just how the, the author page in WordPress is structured. Um, you, you obviously see the title, you see the kernel, and you see the content area, you see post revisions and a bunch of stuff nobody cares about. And then, you know, then your custom fields might show up below that. Um, so, um, we can code it so that it reorders that. We can, we can sort of get some fields so that next to the content area so that that's a little bit better. But also, um, I really try to be as explicit as possible with where on the page this particular custom field is going to be output. Like if you look at a comp and there's three distinct content areas, I want to make sure that someone knows nothing about it and, and creates a new post sees, oh, this one, this one, this one, those are those three. Um, and if it's not clear, uh, you, know, you, you can actually inject things in your meta boxes, like you know, little diagrams that will say this goes there. You know, try to make it as, as as easy as possible for somebody to create content because if they don't know, they're going to be scared to do it. They're not going to they're not going to publish more stuff. Um, one of the other drawbacks that I've had though is, you know, putting important stuff in comp in to custom fields that they want included in their RSS feed, um, and the RSS file format basically has has one block for 
the excerpt of the plot for the content. So we need to go a little trickier where we aggregate some of the important stuff so that we make sure it gets into that content area when we publish the feed. Um, and yes, hand, hand coding custom fields is it's terrible anymore. Um, I don't recommend doing it. Um, so that's kind of how we I break WordPress out of the title and, and content log model. Um, but there's there's a lot of other stuff um, that on the website too that that's usually this is the terrible problems I talked about. This is where that stuff comes comes back to get you. Um, I know there's a lot of things on, on the website that aren't the title and the content. Uh, there's all sorts of junk in the header and the footer, and everybody wants to be able to edit everything. So um, I kind of take a take a blob of of the text and I, it, the, the solution to implement it kind of reveals itself as you start to ask questions about it without, kind of without knowing anything about it. Um, it would be a, a black box problem in, in uh, software development. But um, I, I'll ask a question like, does this thing have to, to be on my website in more than one page? Um, does, it, does it go on every page? Um, and if, depending on where it appears in the, on the page, it might be part of the header or the footer file. Um, so that's just kind of like one simple flow of asking these questions. Um, it, and if, and then when things get a lot trickier, does this have to be managed and updated by somebody who's not me? Um, do I want the author to have to go to the theme editor and search through a PHP file to find the address in the footer because they, you know, they leave their office? Now, I never want anybody to have to do that. Um, but then also, is this a user interface thing like a like a submit button for a form, something easy to translate it? Um, that has uh, has more constraints, but thankfully WordPress gives us the ability to translate things fairly easily. Um, is, is it a snippet of content that needs to be injected into other static pieces? Like, uh, I built a website for a bank, and they re not the big bank, they're gone, um, but <laughs> a little local bank, and they, they have an ATM network that they're constantly expanding. They like to talk about it everywhere. We have 1,200 ATMs, and then we have you know, 1,500 ATMs. And they mention it in, in everything. Do I want them to have to go try and remember or search through all their posts to remember where they mention the number of ATMs? I just made an administrative page with a blank that said number of ATMs, and I typed it in, and I gave them a shortcut. They could stick in everything, and they did. It was everywhere. It was every, at, the, at the footer of everything they ever published, it, they talked about how many ATMs they have. It was changing so much. Um, so, and and the, the last consideration, uh, like the address I talked about, it, is this something that we need to, we want to use something like a microformat? So, like, I could structure an address and a telephone number so that, you know, if somebody lives on a mobile phone, they know that this is a telephone number. If they click on it, they will call me. Um, the schema.org has tons and tons and tons of different microformats um, that somebody might use. So, that's another consideration for, um, does, you know, how you implement it based on whether it needs to be marked up or that stuff. Um, there, there is, if you pick the wrong path, um, there, there, is, there are ways to remediate. Um, first of all, yeah, thank you, uh, Adams, don't, don't panic. Um, if, you, if you need the custom post types or you didn't, uh, or you're implementing custom post types and you realize you don't need custom post types, I, again, there, there's, there are plugins to convert pages and to posts and post to pages and custom post types back to posts. And, um, if, if you, if, as somebody familiar with the, with the database level, if you look at it, it's, it's ingenious how they actually implement the custom post types, because they're not, it's not super duper complicated. So it's, it's pretty cool. There are, there are plugins that can help you with that. Um, and, this, and again, the same thing with taxonomies. Um, I usually don't, don't try to get too, uh, too fancy if I suddenly realize, oh, these things are all, you know, colors and I want to break them out. Um, or something like that. Because of the uh, bulk edit, I, I kind of recently discovered bulk edit for posts in WordPress, and uh, it's really fantastic. Uh, if you create custom taxonomies, and you select a bunch of posts and you bulk edit them, you can unselect categories and select your new taxonomy and apply, and change them all at the same time. So you might even need, need a plugin to remediate uh, moving, moving a taxonomy onto a custom taxonomy. So, um, and we can do, we can do other things to fix, you know, if, if there's a static piece of text, um, we can create an administrative page and then you know, give the, the author the ability to edit that in the WordPress interface and not have to go dig through a PHP file. Um, to make short codes like the ATM example, I, I haven't checked recently how many ATMs are up to. Um, 
Or, you know, somewhere down the line, uh, post-format support isn't turned on by default in new themes, but it's, it's kind of a one-line code change to make post-formats available. So if they realize in the future, like, you know, I'm starting to embed a lot more, you know, videos with one little comment on them. I kind of want that to be wider and not in the arrow column. Can we change the layout of that? You can implement post formats and create a new, uh, a new partial to display that post format. I mean, if you look at the 2013 theme again, the, it's, it's the absolute best example. Um, because that's how, essentially, they, they iterate through all and say, is this, is this post, uh, you know, a microblog type? Or a video type, or a side, or a. But they're all there, and they loaded separate file. So if you want to edit them, you can just go edit that file. You don't have to think about the PHP logic and all that junk. So, um, really, it, it, again, don't panic. Uh, WordPress can do it, and it's it's not always been. Um, what all this boils down to, though, is how you do the structure. It obviously, depends on the content of your website. Um, <laughs> And I'm not going to be the, uh, I'm not going to stand here and proselytize that all the content has to be done before design and coding can begin. Because if I did that, I, I wouldn't eat my children to be hungry too. So, um, but we at least have to know what the shape of the content is. I, I, you know, if they want to see our code before it's done, why can't we see the content before it's done? I, I don't care what the words are. I want the shape of the content. I, I describe it as like a, like a, like a sketch. Like a, you know, when they're looking for a criminal or something, the, the composite sketch. If you, you you would know enough to recognize the person if you if you saw the sketch. That's all. That's all I really want. Any other shape of the content. Is it is it a sentence? Is it a paragraph? Is it a page? Does it need to be broken multiple pages? Does it need to have child pages? Do they need to relate to each other? Do I need to display them all together? Do I need to display them all separately? So, um, if if we're our own client, we can always kind of bring that all together. We know what our content is. But if you're, you know, I, I'm a consultant, and it's never my content, it's never my design. Uh, I'm just a, a developer, so um, I usually ask, is the content done? And the answer is always no. And I say, okay, can I get something that says draft on it? It can say draft. It can have that, that watermark in the back of Microsoft Word that says draft. I just want to know the shape of the content so that I can make the website uh, fit their content uh, right now and uh, in the future. So, and I think I've got a few minutes for questions. About 10? Anybody? Um, is it? No. <coughs> I have a library of articles. I mean, they're written as posts, but they're really articles. Five to eight hundred words on average, and I'm concerned about as we go to mobile that that's too heavy, mm -hmm. and thinking that maybe I should I see on some of the news websites they'll have like three to five bullets summarizing mm -hmm. the article. How would you recommend? Provide? That's the absolute perfect situation to use um, custom fields. Implement a custom field for it. Um, since the the WordPress excerpt doesn't allow for formatting, um, you want to use something like custom fields, and advanced custom fields can give you. Uh, Another WYSIWYG with, you know, editable controls uh, field. So implement that, um, and then your your display template for mobile would, would instead of bringing in the full content or the excerpt, it would bring in the, that custom field that has just like the full the teasers. Um, good morning, Mike. It's all being recorded. Just good. I wanted to see at least one of the other sessions that that's going on right. Now. Can you talk a little bit more about um, strategy about using uh, categories versus tags? Because that's pretty much the fault in using categories for everything. It's, um, yeah, categories versus tags is interesting. Because um, you can use categories in a free form way like you do with tags. Um, but I usually, I usually try to think of categories as, as kind of being an organizational structure about something rather than describing it. Like, I'm creating little buckets inside of the bucket to put them in, and tags as being a lot more freeform. Like, you know, I, I tell somebody I, I went to a restaurant, um, I might want to have a category for the restaurant's cuisine, but I don't necessarily want a category for the decor, or the types of tables, or how long I waited, or, you know, little metadata about it. So, 
um, I kind of see categories as, as more of a as more of a structural thing since they are hierarchical and they can relate to other things. Um, and you can always adjust your categories in the future too. If I wanted to to take in the same example my restaurant uh, cuisine categories and I wanted to break them up by city or something. Like that. Um, although that's another taxonomy. Cool. Um, <laughs> but you can always you can always move them around and make them relate to each other or make them not relate to each other. Um, and you know you have the option to have hierarchy tags are really kind of free form and I try to use them just as, as being descriptive but not necessarily as, as defining or organizing. Does that help at all? Um, as far as uh, uh, post formats, uh, if you want to jump outside of what the theme is giving you, like if it's you know, maybe an aside or video or whatever the case may be, do you have any tips, tricks, or plugins that you suggest for uh, modifying post formats? You know, I'm, I'm, CSS? <laughs> um, I just or started images. to get into post formats. They're introduced in uh, 3.1. And really it's, it's interesting that what clients ask me for kind of comes a lot subsequent. When they hear about a, f a feature, then they ask me about it. Um, I think post formats is extensible beyond the seven types that WordPress gives you, um, but like, I definitely now, immediately after this, I want to run to the happiness bar and search the codex. But I think you can extend it for, for to create your own custom host formats. So that's, that's the route I would go for that. Yesterday I was in another talk, and they mentioned gravity forms gravity for form. custom post types. Mm -hmm. And um, do you recommend using that plugin um, and just going with the default? I don't know about Gravity Forms creating custom post types. I've only ever used it for forms that are embedded by a shortcode. Um, but I do. There are um, there are there are plugins that create custom post types that I've used that they're kind of single purpose for custom post types. Such as? Uh, I think there's some types. Okay. I was in a session yesterday that talked about the custom post type UI plugin. Oh, cool. They read that. I still do my custom post type coding by hand, and I probably shouldn't do that either. Because, again, within a few revisions of WordPress, the, two, the third party tools get more mature and more stable, and, and I should really <coughs> stop doing that. Anybody else? No stumpers? You can always catch me at the happening stumpers. What's the best way to use? to uh, have geolocated data in a custom post type? Is geolocated data applied to... Or geocoded data, like a you know, latitude, longitude, GPS, for See, I would, use that, I would use a custom field for that, because it's it's relevant to a single post. It, it may not be relevant to multiple posts. I'm thinking about all my posts being that way, and then searching on the map to bring up relevant content. If, if it's different for each individual post, I would say use a custom field for it. I will be posting my slides tonight, uh, and I'll tweet them out. I'll tweet them out with a hashtag tonight. I just got to make a PDF for them. So um, now it's time for lunch. Uh, go Red Sox. Mm -hmm. <laughs>